Good morning. Welcome to Market High. I'm Annette Cleary. I'm the Director of College Counseling and starting my 21st year here. I too am a parent, so my son Ryan is a junior, and my husband Dan is also an 83 graduate. We're excited to have you with us this morning and have some of the members of our Market High family talk to you about what makes Market High unique. Before we do that, we'd like to share a recent survey to share some information about our recent alums. In the recent survey that was done of our alums, we found that our graduates were significantly more likely to earn a merit scholarship for college, attend college immediately, earn that master's degree and advanced degrees, and complete their bachelor's degrees in less time. Our alums also feel significantly more likely or felt prepared for college, that they could communicate well, they could handle responsibilities, be achieved academically and outside the classroom, took on leadership roles, made new friends, and assimilated to college easily. And they felt more likely uh, to view college classes as easier or equal to what they experienced at Market High, and certainly felt that the values that they were taught were significantly taught better during their high school years. And looking at that list of values, how important are some of those values, grit, perseverance, adaptability, as we're navigating COVID-19 this year? Let me pass it on to our panelists to introduce themselves so you can meet and hear from them about their experience and their son's experience. Cami? Hi, my name's Cami Adele. My husband, Daryl, and I are parents to three boys. Our oldest son, is a junior in college, and then we have a junior and a senior at Marquette High currently. Hi, I'm Tim Baumgartner. I'm a 2004 graduate of Marquette High School. Uh, I then went on to Notre Dame and graduated with a business degree and work here in town in Milwaukee as the Vice President of Analytics at an advertising agency named Laughlin Constant. Good morning. My name is David Carr. I'm a 1998 graduate of Marquette University High School. I went on to Butler University uh, for undergrad and Marquette Law School. I'm currently a, an attorney at Hush Blackwell's Milwaukee office. Hi, everyone. I'm JJ Eagli. I'm from Germantown, Wisconsin. I'm a sophomore at Marquette High, and I'm involved in the chorus and the musicals last year at Marquette High. Hi, I'm Christine Keyes. I have a son who graduated in 2018. He's a junior in college now. I also have an alum husband who graduated in 1983 and um, still involved with different things at Marquette High. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Luke Ronsky. I'm from Bayside, Wisconsin, and I'm a current junior in Marquette High. In my time at Marquette, I've been involved in football, baseball, select course, and the admissions homeroom. Thank you, panelists. We're going to get started with questions to share with you. So our first question of the day is, please give a specific example of when you felt you or your son's education paid off. Christine? So there are a number of times when we have felt that it paid off. I would say, you know, academically, there was no question. Um, CJ? Our son has, you know, was a good, has been a good student, um, but I did worry when he got to high school um, how hard it would be for him at the next level. And it, you know, it just worked out to be a great opportunity. And you know, at the end of the day, as he was a senior, he did get into the schools he was looking to get into, and you know, had opportunities for scholarships and that sort of thing. So I feel like he was just really set up to succeed with um, what the teachers offered and the way they prepared him with his study habits. And I think that really stood out. I also had a really good example from this summer um, where we, um, with, with COVID and everything, it was really hard in um, moving from a dorm situation last year to a house this year, he's living in it, getting stuff um, to the house he's living in. And we were able to connect with um, an, a friend of my husband's from when he went to Marquette High who lives in the Boston area and had a lot of things delivered to his house just down the street from BC and um, you know, be able to then take it over to the house. Um, so they let us send the stuff there and they had us over for dinner. And it was just really a special moment to see how um, my son was able to interact with confidence um, with an adult that he really doesn't know very well. And, um, and I see that repeatedly with not only my son, but a lot of the boys as they um, interact with others, you know, you'll hear this a lot, but just how they are able 
to and are taught to shake hands, not in COVID, but <laughs> shake hands, look people in the eye, and um, really just be confident that um, they are able to um, bring something to the table and that they are able to learn from whoever they're talking to. I could just reiterate the, um, the work ethic that they come out of Marquette High with is insane almost. I mean, you really, as a parent, you worry that your kids are going to be ready for that next step. And after seeing my older son, I'm, I'm not really worried because they've been given the tools that they need to succeed. And they leave Marquette driven and they have a desire to succeed. So I hate to become irrelevant in their lives, but it's, it's amazing to watch. And I'm grateful to Marquette for getting them ready. Thank you. Second question. How prepared for college were you or your son due to your experience at Market High? David? Uh, in a word, incredibly. Um, the foundation that I learned and was put into, you know, set into my work ethic and study habits uh, paid off tremendously at, at my university uh, setting and in law school. Um, I, I have been many, many times where I was a freshman and I was often studying in the library or in my dorm room. I had teammates of mine or, or roommates of mine ask me why I was always studying. And that was really just because that's what I was used to from high school. Um, you know, I used those study habits and they really paid off. And I actually had uh, roommates of mine and teammates of mine after they got their grades uh, after the first semester to teach them the way of market high school. So. It was an incredible experience and really set me off into a great path moving forward for the rest of my educational experience. I also would say that I think um, in terms of being prepared um, for the next step, our, we have a really good counseling program. Um, and I think that um, the kids are, um, you want them to go where they're going to succeed the best. And I think it takes a lot um, for our advising staff to help the guys look to places where they will fit in well. You don't want to be in over your head and you don't want to be somewhere where it's too easy, you know, and there's a lot of things to go through to figure out where that might be. And, and they do really a great job starting from freshman year. Yeah, I, I want to jump in and talk about something that, that David brought up too. Just, um, you know, when your son goes off to college for the first time, you're no longer there to manage their schedule, to manage their study habits. They've got the independence, so to speak. And Marquette High did a great job of preparing uh, myself and my classmates for that experience when you're in college because it, it is a different landscape, it is a different environment. And uh, Marquette High definitely breeds self starters in the sense that. You've got students that understand how to manage their schedule, how to manage their time, how to accurately, appropriately prepare for things um, that many of my classmates I did not see my freshman or sophomore year in college. In addition, I think just in, with regard to preparation and stuff like that, um, I, between the AP classes and things that I took at Marquette High, uh, I went to college with about 16 college credits, which means that my freshman year, I was effectively already one semester through. Um, and it allowed me the flexibility to take courses that I want. I wound up switching majors, things like that. Still graduated in four years, no problem. So uh, as we talk about how prepared we were for college, honestly, I was overprepared. Um, I had a bunch of credit going in. I knew the proper study habits. I knew how to be a, an autonomous student. Um, and it really prepared me well for college. And I, I remember thinking probably sometime in my junior year in a, a course in college, I was like, man, this is probably the first time I've seen something that's like 100% new. Everything else I had been prepared for and I was ready for uh, because of Marquette High. And it really took probably two or three years into college for me to be like, oh, this is new. Question number three, did you or your parents consider a public high school? And if you did, what changed your mind? JJ? Um, so yeah, in grade school, a lot of my friends uh, were thinking about going to public high schools, and there was a really small percentage of guys that were, that were looking at Marquette. And I told my parents, who had like no doubt in their mind that I was going to Marquette, that I wanted to go uh, where all my other friends were going. Um, but then we went to the open house at Marquette, I think in 2018, and it just 
opened my eyes to everything that Marquette has to offer, all the different um, activities and opportunities that they bring. Uh, that's just something that I saw and felt that I wanted to do. And it didn't matter if a lot of my friends ended up going there. Thank you. Uh, alums or parents, anyone else look at a public high school to add to that? I can add a little to that. Um, when we're not from the area, so when we moved um, here, we moved into a school district that was strong and our plan was uh, Catholic grade school, public high school. And then as time got closer, we thought, you know, we probably should look. Like he's our first child, we should spend some time looking into it, not just use the formula that we had planned. So Thomas went to a shadow day and he came home and he, he was sold. He, he was in awe. He's like, every kid wanted to be there. They wanted to learn. You know, they're engaged, they're excited, um, everybody was so nice. And so, you know, my husband and I looked at each other and we're like, if he's that passionate about it, it's got to be a great thing. So we made the choice and we never looked back. It's been great. I, I would say, if I can jump in, I had a very similar situation. Uh, I think JJ mentioned uh, I grew up in Shorewood and many, many of my friends were going to go to Shorewood High School. And, and that was a very difficult thing for me uh, to the thought of leaving my friends and, and continuing on to the public high school uh, or leaving my friends and going to, to somewhere else other than the public high school. Um, but I, I met with and talked to people who were at Market High still at the time and alums and just learned more about it um, and was extremely impressed with their, where they saw their life going and what their goals were and how focused and how much they loved Marquette High School. They really truly talked about the brotherhood that uh, that is part, such a huge part of Marquette High. Um, so yeah, while it was difficult and it's certainly difficult for people to leave their great school friends who may not be going to Marquette High School, uh, it was certainly worth it. Uh, I'm, and I'm, I can also say I have a great group of guy friends uh, market high, but also maintain those great relationships with my friends from Shorewood High School and other public high schools who didn't go to market high school. Thank you. Next question. When you think back to your studies at MUHS, what words come to mind? And I'd like to start with our current students. Luke, would you start? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think the first words that come to my mind when I think about my time and my future time at Marquette are uh, both multi-dimensional education and all-encompassing education. And in that, I mean, um, the school is, and the educational experience is a beautiful combination of academic rigor combined with faith intertwined in the lives of students every day, and also building those relationships with your peers and your teachers alike. I think the staff here and the school as a whole is really focused on uh, not defining students just by how well they do academically, but uh, also uh, letting them branch out in their faith life and in their relationships as well. Can you guys think of, and this includes our, our alum parents as well and current parents, can you give a specific example of how a teacher or a class specifically challenged you or your son? Can we start with Cami? Sure. Um, as I mentioned before, I have three uh, boys, each and every one of them, are completely different. They are motivated by different things. They are, have different challenges and gifts and they're all over the board. We, it, you think you figure it out and the next one comes and it, you don't know it. So when they went to Marquette, I'm mean, truly amazed that all three of them have been able to make a home, find their niche and a place for them. And so, it's hard for me to point to a teacher without pointing out one for each of them because they are so different. So our oldest, Thomas, his biggest influence was Mrs. Bonachow freshman year, hands down. And that was our first experience. So she was good for us too. And um, she really is uh, 
sets such a high bar and standard, but with the background of loving and caring for the student. So I was so grateful because she set that bar, I could see what she was teaching him in her class. He was applying everything to all of his classes. So that really ended up with a very successful formula for him. And it's all the foundation that she built for him or with him, I would say. Um, the second uh, teacher I would call out would be for my uh, son Sam is Mr. Smith. And um, Mr. Smith, he's, you know, old school, tough love, everything that Sam needs to <laughs> succeed. It's kind of the way we deal with them at home and it's so nice to have that person on the inside who sees that. Um, you know, history, which he taught him, was not easy for Sam. And Mr. Smith really, you know, had the expectations, worked with him through it, but it taught him that, okay, things are going to be hard, but you still got to do them. And that was probably the biggest um, lesson that Sam uh, had learned with Mr. Smith. And then I have Johnny, who is my junior. And um, Johnny is not an English student. He's math, he's science, that's his passion, what he's good at. So English class, he doesn't get overly excited about going to English class. So he had um, Mr. Newbeck, and by the end of that year, he went from like going to English class, like, uh, you know, I gotta go to English, to like really being engaged and inspired to do better in his English class. And Mr. Newbeck knew, just knew how to connect with him. So, um, and there's so many more, that's just some examples. So that's all I have. Yeah, I think just jumping in on that, Camille, um, the English teachers, the, the teachers at Marquette High really teach you to be great writers and they challenge you to do that um, every year uh, of your education there. It's really fantastic. I mean, I'm, I'm old, but Mr. Carney, uh, Ms. Downey, Mr. Prosser, uh, lots of great names in the, the English department. And every single one of them um, really had a lasting effect on how I wrote, the ways I went about it, uh, my education there. And there are still things that I'll sit and write work emails today, thinking through advice, lessons, uh, feedback that I've gotten from any number of those people. Um, it's, it's really funny for me. I, I work in a relatively quantitative field. And um, I'm also a volunteer on the agency's proofreading team. So um, it's just I, the opposite of what I would do at work normally, but I've had such good grammar, um, just sort of instincts and education over the years that I, I can't help but want to, to stay doing those types of things. And, and really, it's really had a very, very lasting effect. I can think many times of different things that Mr. Carney or Mr. Prosser or Ms. Downey has said about my writing um, and how they recommend, you know, good English and, and good ways to articulate your thoughts and uh, all of those stick with me to today. And uh, it was challenging for sure, but uh, really had a long lasting impact for sure. I would actually, I wasn't even gonna participate in this particular question necessarily, but you prompted me to think about um, with my son's experience as well. So not a writer, so not a reader, so not an English guy. You know, he's an analytics guy actually. And if he never had to write or read, I think he'd be fine, you know, beyond that, you know, business setting. But he also had Mr. Newbeck three times. Um, he had Shakespeare kick his butt a couple times. And um, he had to work through those things that were difficult for him. And um, he came out on the other side way better for it. He has friends in college asking him to do the editing, which is shocking to me, but a testament to the education um, that he did get um, at Marquette High. And I will say, because um, I'm not sure this even fits in anywhere else I was going to talk about stuff is, you know, the Jesuit Kool-Aid has been drunk in this house. And, um, you know, I love that so many aspects of it from the high school perspective and the fact that um, my son is actually continuing it in college is amazing. The liberal arts, you know, in the college perspective, it's from a liberal arts perspective, even though he's a business major, he has to take all these philosophy classes and things like that, which, you know, started at Mark High. And I'm so thankful for that foundation because if he had his druthers, that would not be on the table and that education, that base would not be there. And so the fact that he was able to get it lovingly and in a settings where he was willing to embrace it, that's a gift. Okay. 
Can I, I'd like to jump in here and I, I want to use a, a term that <clears throat> I'm not sure where else to use it, but I want to use it here. Marquette for me and so many others has been so transformational. Um, whether it's a teacher or a class or subject, uh, I could, you know, my own experience, you know, what I do now is so much reading and so much writing English, as Tim mentioned before, you know, it, I don't, in, I never really enjoyed write, reading or writing, but I did when I, I learned how, and I, I developed that skill when I got to market high school and Tim mentioned Mr. Carney, uh, you know, that's really where it started for me. Uh, he really taught us to think and to use our brain when we're reading and when we're writing and, and it's just carried on for the, into my legal career. Um, I use it daily, I, the, the trend, you know, the, the, uh, editing aspect of my job, um, now, I mean, I, so much of that, I didn't learn from law school, but I learned from market high school. Um, and just thinking, using your brain. I think Mr. Carney said that a few times to me and my classmates uh, while I was in his class. So um, it, Marquette High School has certainly been transformational in certain classes, but also athletic uh, experiences for me. Thank you. I, I would say if I could add to that as well as somebody who's been in the building um, for 20 years, one of the other pieces in terms of connecting with our students happens outside of the actual class time in that a vast majority of us serve as advisors to students across all, all four years. And our students have an opportunity starting sophomore year to choose the adult in the building that they want to connect with. So it's, it's kind of that primary person that I'm going to talk about course selection with, but I'm also going to talk about the night I broke up with my girlfriend or we lost the big game this weekend or whatever the case may be. And I think from my vantage point as, as an employee in the building, as an educator, it's a wonderful opportunity to connect. And I could tell you stories for a long time of the young men that I've had the privilege to go to their wedding and see them get married and meet their first child and things like that. So um, part of being this family is the opportunity that I can choose uh, beyond the four years, which is really quite unique. And I will, just to add the comments you added about colleagues, I was thinking, I, I so appreciate colleagues. I'm here because I love the boys, but I also appreciate the colleagues. And, and I think I can say everyone that I work with takes their work so seriously and they're so passionate and you heard that in the examples. But the fun thing, and, and the students maybe can tell you more about this too, we don't take ourselves too seriously or if we start to, the students every year get to poke fun at us at the uh, annual Senior Follies production in the fall where they get to write and um, learn all of our idiosyncrasies and just put them on the stage for all of us to see. So um, we do have, have fun along the way as well. Luke, I'm gonna get you ready for the next question. Can you think of a way in which the school's Jesuit Catholic tradition made your academic work more rewarding or meaningful? Yeah. Um the first thing that comes to my mind there of why, why an education like Market High is this so meaningful to me is because every teacher and every adult and every peer I've encountered in the building has really pushed me to, to make sure I'm putting passion into my work and taking pride in what I'm doing rather than just going through the motions of learning. Everything, in everything we do, we're challenged to, to really think about it and to really apply it to everyday situations instead of just reading off a page and regurgitating the information on a quiz we're really challenged to think and contemplate everything that we're doing and I think for me uh, an education like that is much more meaningful and valuable in the long run than just knowing information. Tim I'm going to throw the next one your way. Many parents might have concerns about the cost of a private education at MUHS. What would you say to convince someone that it's worth it? Yeah I, I think it's very straightforward Mark had high is obviously a very worthwhile stop along the way. Um, as I had mentioned before, with the college credit that I had, um, I was able to, you know, take more classes that I wanted to. I was able to shift around majors and things like that and still graduate within four years. And that's becoming a, a big challenge, I think, across the board these days. Um, you know, 
young men go into college and they don't necessarily know what they want to do, or they might struggle adjusting to college and things like that. And you know what's really expensive? A fifth year of college. And so if you look at the cost of Marquette High compared to another year of tuition at Boston College or Notre Dame for the folks on, the, on this call, um, I'm sure they look at that and say, man, that, that Marquette High tuition looks like it, it's certainly worth it. Um, I, I have to joke, my older brother also went to Notre Dame, graduated in three and a half years and did a semester abroad in lovely South Bend, Indiana. Um, but mom and dad were really happy to only have to pay half the cost of his senior year of tuition. Um, and in addition to that, too, uh, as we talk about that Jesuit and that Catholic tradition and, um, you know, again, the, the Boston College folks here as well, the, the Jesuit schools uh, absolutely love Marquette High graduates. And so um, as I was applying for college and things like that, there were multiple Jesuit schools in, across the United States that gave five figure um, scholarships to myself and my colleagues and things like that. So really good opportunities across the board, whether it's getting your students, your sons through in four years. Um, and not paying that dreaded fifth or sixth year of uh, tuition and things like that. But then in addition to that, um, lots of scholarships and opportunities, especially from the, the Jesuit institutions across America. So if your son's interested in any of those Jesuit schools, um, they, they certainly really, really appreciate the Marquette High Boys and uh, definitely offer scholarships in the process too. I would also jump in and say there's a lot of great examples I could give about the ta um, the financial and practical sides um, uh, and ways that that uh, the it pays off. But I would say also that if I could summarize, one of the things that's hard to um, otherwise hard to quantify would be relationship. Um, and we have retreats that the boys go on. Uh, freshman retreat is huge, a uh, great bonding time when they're new to the school. Um, other opportunities throughout, and then you know, Kairos as maybe uh, second semester juniors or seniors, which is life altering for many of them and, um, and sleep depriving, right? <laughs> but um, besides that, um, they, um, and a lot of my son's friends, frankly, um, he came to, to Market High with a lot of guys that he'd gone to grade school with. We did have a big class that came over, but some of his best friends were not Catholic, did not go to Catholic schools. And they still will say, and their parents will say, that those retreats were just as meaningful or more meaningful to those guys because they're not used to the experiencing that with their faith or lack of faith um, experience at home. And so there's very, um, and I actually went to the Catholic high school I talked about um, in the Chicago area. I was not Catholic at the time. And it can be a funny experience being on the outside, but I will say that no matter where you're coming from, from your experience, from a school perspective or a faith perspective, Marquette High's arms are open. Um, and the, you, know, you can fit in as much as you want. If you want to embrace the Catholicism and learn about it, that's great. But if, if you don't, there's still just the core moral values and the um, Jesuit, you know, we have this graduate at graduation that we talk about. Um, those, the, you know, we want our graduates to can end up, you know, seeking academic, academic, academic excellence and being loving and, um, and I have them, guys help me out here. I have them, um, the loving and religious and committed to justice and open to growth. All those things, Catholic or not, to have your sons come out with those things being a part of them is really important. If I can jump in on this, I mean, as the graduate, proud graduate of Marquette University High School, I could talk about this all day. Uh, I've been trying to think about how to limit my answer here for the sake of time. Um, there's so many things that you just can't measure in terms of why it's worth it. Um, connections, uh, once you're out of Marquette High School, I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've met someone in my day-to-day -day life and they somehow market high school comes up because it always does and it's it they're like oh class of 72 and what class are you i'm 98. it's an instant connection an instant brotherhood uh i've never known people to love their school as much as i i have experienced my in my my own life um you know people want to help out their brothers from market high school that they meet in all throughout walks of life. Um, the brotherhood that continues to this day. I mean, I've never, I don't 
you don't hear about people who went to public schools talk about their high school or and their classmates and their friends like they do when people someone's going to market high um i'm still closer to this day with friends of mine who i went to market high school with compared to teammates of mine from college who we played four years uh, together or people who i lived with for four years um you know that that connection and that brotherhood is just second to none um you know so there's just so many things you could talk about um in terms of what, what it's worth, but it's opportunities as well. I mean, the opportunities that have, the doors that have opened for me that just because I happened to go to Market High School and I met someone who went to Market High School as well. Um, I was lucky enough to have a, a college scholarship for, for baseball. Um, I'm pretty certain that I wouldn't have had, wouldn't have had that opportunity had I gone to a different high school, whether it was public or private, where the I had the opportunity to be seen by coaches uh, at the college and professional level. Uh, I, I'm pretty certain that, that wouldn't have happened at Marquette High School just because I, or excuse me, wouldn't have happened at somewhere else other than Marquette High School. Uh, so I'm extremely thankful. Thank you. I think one of the things that came to mind as I was listening to a number of things that you said too for our students, and, and it was in the survey slide at the beginning, is that our graduates, um, are significantly more likely to assimilate into college life. And I've been asked several times why that is. And I think it's because our students are coming from all the different areas that they are. You guys have had to figure out how to make new friends. And I think as parents, we joke because if I live in Brookfield, my son's new best friend definitely lives in Mequon or Franklin or Cedarburg because it's never on the same side of town. We're always you know, shuttling back and forth, which is a privilege to do while we can do it. Um, but I think, in my 20 years, I have not had young men come back and say, I, I'm not assimilating, I'm not getting acclimated, I can't do this, I'm not capable, because you've all worked through it and you know, you, you have that resilience as part of your being. So that's a fabulous thing. Let's talk all boys. What do you see as some of the benefits having been in this all boys environment uh, for you or your son? And David, I'm gonna come back to you if I could. Sure. Um, for me, it's been, and it was when I was at Market High School, the, fo the focus on a, a brotherhood amongst my my classmates and, and at all levels, uh, whether it's my class or uh, guys who are older or younger. Um, you know, I, I thought we had the opportunity to be ourselves, to focus. Um, you know, we have we had distractions of girls, of course, um, but it, it probably wasn't as present as it would be in a co-ed situation uh, where we could go in to school every day, uh, bond with our classmates, focus on our studies and, and our extracurriculars. Um, and again, I, as I said earlier, uh, I think the all boys environment uh, per, has carried on uh, with the connections uh, with my classmates and my friends to this day. Um, you know, we, there's just a bond. I, I, I can't really explain it other than we're, we're all in it together. We're all going to, through a lot of the same things all at the same time. Um, and, and high school is hard, it, it, but to have that brotherhood and that connection with everyone it, that you're going through the same experiences or similar experiences is, is incredible. Um, and, and someone mentioned Kairos um, as well. And I, I know that's, again, transformational. Uh, I'm certain that people who, including my family, who uh, knew me before and after that incredible experience uh, would say I came out of it a very different, uh, improved person. Um, and that's something that I'll never forget. I'll jump in here. Um, boys are different. They're unique challenges when you're raising them. Um, they learn differently. They engage differently. They may eye, make eye contact differently. I mean, everything about them is different. And Marquette does a great job of teaching the boys the way they're going to be the most successful. Um, 
and boys can do some really silly, not smart things, you know, and um, Marquette did not expect them to come in the doors perfect, and they're not, and they'll make mistakes, and Marquette knows that. They don't, you know, throw the baby out with the bathwater. They're like, okay, we've got this. We're going to teach you how to work through so that you do better the next time. This is the right choice. And, um, you know, that's great because we try to teach that at home. And uh, we know we have boys jumping all over the curb place and it can get kind of hectic. So being at a place that understands their language is, um, it's a, a true blessing for us. I think, and it's funny, I'll ask the two students here and hopefully their facial reactions to this question. Do you guys even notice that you don't have girls in your hallways or in your classrooms? Figured. I, I think one of the things that's, that I, I don't know how to describe it other than after a while, that's just your life. That's just your, yep, I go to school every day and I'm surrounded by a bunch of guys. Um, and I, I think you're allowed to focus on the things that are probably most important at that point in your life. You're, you're, you're comfortable with your surroundings. There aren't um, unnecessary distractions or concerns or anything like that. And I think one of the great things about Marquette High that Camille, I think, was trying to touch on as well is um, they raise gentlemen. They turn your boys into gentlemen. And um, now, as much as ever, I think that's a really important thing that they do in their education process, in their community, um, with the, the environment that they foster at the organization. Um, if I have sons, I want them to go to Marquette High. And if I have daughters, I want them to date Marquette High guys. I, I think it's really an ultimate testament to they help raise gentlemen in this environment and um, what parents don't want gentlemen right now. Yeah, and I think uh, tacking onto one of the earlier things you said, Mr. Baumgartner, was that uh, the comfortable atmosphere created in the comfortable learning environment, I think allows guys to be more vulnerable and let their guard down in terms of their faith and their passion for what they're doing. And I think that's a really unique thing because, because guys feel like they have nobody to impress really and that kind of distraction is out of the way. Um, they're really allowed to dive into deep faith issues and deep social issues without that worry of being judged for what they think or what they believe. You took the word right out of my mouth. I, I mean, I feel like I got to see my son be a lot more open and silly and just comfortable with his friends than he probably would have been otherwise. And um, I always say, I remember my first time walking into the building. Um, I mean, I'm an only child that grew up with like my mom. I mean, I'm like, I, guys, you know, I, I, it was, I remember walking into this building with almost a thousand guys, you know, and um, so intimidating. But you know what? Everyone, every single kid you walk by, whether I know you or not, says hello, is respectful, and um, and is that like we've mentioned before, is enjoying being there. And it's it's even like when hall it's hall time and they're changing classes. It's so not chaotic. It's just like so run so well, and it's not like people are beaten down to be that way. It's just like you know you're doing your thing and you're doing it properly and respectfully and it's just a great place to be. And, um, and I think I, I'm thankful for that. And I would say like I had an example too, where CJ had, I remember when he was visiting Marquette High, he was in eighth grade and he was visiting a class. And I felt like this really captured how, back to Cammie's point about how the teachers get guys, is that, you know, do you know guys or just people who need to spin pens, right? They need that distraction, right? And some teachers could just be ticked off and just make you stop and be done. But that, you know, the guys, in particular, I think like to do that. And so there's a teacher who had this little game kind of thing that if you spin, if you would spin your pen, if you dropped it, like she got to try to chuck it out the window into the atrium where you can't get to and it was lost, right? And so instead of just, you know, responding in a way to stop the behavior, made it fun. And, and if you didn't want to lose your pen, you didn't spin your pen, you know? And I just thought that really captured um, the creative way that the teachers are able to deal with guy behavior. <laughs> Luke and JJ, would you consider for a moment talking a little bit, because I'm guessing we have parents and some grade schoolers with us who are concerned about not seeing girls for four years. They're not going to see them in the hallways here. Can you talk about where you have interactions with um, young women your age along the way academically or outside of the building? Um, I can say something about that. So I participate in, or I have participated in the musical uh, last year, 
both at DSHA and at Marquette. Um, and it's kind of combined with DSHA, so you get to meet girls from there too, uh, which is really nice because they have stuff in common with you that you'll be able to learn throughout practices and uh, different performances. Um, you can go to football games because the girls from DSHA and from other schools will be there, uh, either rooting on their team or someone else's, and you can just meet them there. Um, but yeah, you just got to participate in all different kinds of activities uh, to meet people. Yeah, I think, I think JJ gave some really good examples there. I just want to stress the fact that just because there aren't girls there during the school day does not mean that girls are completely removed from your life. I feel like that's kind of the perception sometimes and that couldn't be farther from true. Um, like JJ mentioned, like sporting events, dances, and even some uh, co-curriculars like robotics and theater are, um, are definitely uh, great places to interact with girls. And uh, those relationships are definitely uh, still there and you can definitely still form relationships with girls your age. I think an overlooked factor here is um, you get to go to the DS dances and the Marquette High dances. I went to two proms and any number of homecomings and things like that. Like, uh, David, I can ask you, hold up your left hand. We both got married. We, we both figured it out eventually. I think people that, you know, focus on the, the all guys aspect, it, it, you're, you're really focusing on four-year decisions when you should be looking at the 40-year decision and what's going to prepare you best for life and things like that. Going to Marquette High and an all-guys school for four years didn't stop me from getting married or anything like that. Thank you. Yep. Did you want to add to that, David? Yeah, um, I think one of the things that that it goes, you know, it's not really talked about is, you know, there's a there's guys from all over Milwaukee who uh, who go to Market High School, and all of those kids guys uh, went to coed or you know I don't know ninety nine percent of them went to coed grade schools. So ultimately, uh, I can't remember if it was Christine or Cami who said, oh well my my son. We live in Brookfield, but we're taking the kids to Mequon. Uh, well, a lot of times what happens is if I grew up in Shorewood and I was going to Brookfield, I was also meeting not only my classmates, but their classmates from grade schools who were also girls. So we're, you're meeting girls who went to grade schools with all of your classmates uh, at Market High and, and from all over Milwaukee. Awesome. Last spring, uh, when the coronavirus uh, sprung on all of us, Market High had to pivot. And MUHS attempted to continue to deliver a high quality education during the difficult times of the pandemic using both virtual and blended learning models. Can you share your thoughts on how Market High has handled learning during the pandemic and last spring through this fall? Luke, you wanna start? Yeah, I can start. Um, so obviously last spring, everybody was virtual. And then as we moved into this year, there was the option to either remain all virtual or a move into a hybrid setup where uh, you attend school every other day. Um, and I think the, the most admirable thing about uh, the way our administration and our teachers have handled this is that the quality of instruction has not dropped at all. Obviously, it's, it's a very difficult time to be a teacher and to be a student. I think teachers have been able to adjust very, very well to how kids are learning differently virtually and in the building and switching back and forth. And I think uh, they've really developed a lot of great teaching strategies to make that, that change easier for students. I can speak a little to the parent aspect of this. Um, when we got shut down in March, um, it was kind of fun at first. I think the kids thought it was like snow day. I don't have to go into school. I can, you know, go to school with pajamas just on the bottom, but I could do it. And um, so it was kind of fun. And then it got clear that it's not so much fun anymore. Like it's this is gonna go on for a while. Um, I do credit Marquette for keeping as much normalcy in our kids' lives as they could. Um, we still had daily prayer, we still did examines, and we, as a family, would sit and listen to the prayer 
you know, on our different devices set up in all sorts of rooms because my college student was home too. And, um, you know, that helped kind of be a touchstone for the kids to keep uh, them a little focused. Um, were things perfect in that spring, go, you know, time? Probably not. Um, but the school really listened to everybody's input and feedback. And then when summer came and we were thinking, oh, can we go back to school? Can we go back to school? You know, as a mom, I was scared because you're hearing all this stuff about, you know, how bad it is and what you can and can't do. And I just remember the presentation that happened, what, mid-July, I think, where, you know, just the thought that went into how to get our kids back to school and the technology and what the teachers were doing to prepare to be able to have park kids, you know, in front of them and park kids doing Zoom. And it just was amazing. I mean, I, I literally, I shed tears after that thinking, oh my gosh, my, my kids can go back to school. And um, I mean, that's a lot of work. I mean, we're all under a lot of stress trying to deal with this, but I mean, the amount of work that Marquette has put in to make this um, school year so that the kids don't lose out on their education, it's, it's been in, insane. Um, and so, so very appreciated. So. Um, yeah, it's kind of like what Luke said, uh, the teaching and the in-class isn't much different other than the fact that there's different safety procedures that we need to go through. Um, but the teachers just treat it like it's a normal day. And I think a lot of the students do too. Um, and just looking back towards the beginning of the year, not that many schools had plans for what they were going to do. Um, and Marquette had this plan, uh, like the hybrid plan, about like a month before school started. So that just shows how determined they are that they want us to learn and they want us to be able to learn at the best of our ability. So, yeah. Yeah, and I'd also like to add, obviously, uh, students are under uh, an abnormal amount of stress as a result of kind of the world climate and what's going on around them because this is a stressful time for everyone. And I think uh, the school as a whole and teachers and staff have really been understanding of that stress that kids are under and how different of a world we're living in. And I think that's another really important thing to keep in mind is how well uh, the staff and teachers have handled that uh, and handled the different ways kids need to be taken care of uh, on a non-academic level as well. I would add to that too, I think, I'm curious to hear from Christine and Cami on this, but I, I, as a parent, I, I think we try to approach what we do in a partnership with each other so that we're working together. Our new director of counseling and I had a chance to go to the Mother's Guild meeting and, and Cami's co-president of that and had a chance just to listen and share ideas of, of how do we support our sons in the classroom, out of the classroom, how do we take care of ourselves? And, and I think part of what makes Marquette High special is that we have that approach that yes, this is about our boys and the brotherhood, but we're all in this together. I think, I don't know, David or Tim, if you said that earlier, we're all in this together, which is great. Thank you. We have one final question. When you compare MUHS to other private high schools in the area, what sets MUHS apart? I'll start. Um, I, I think, again, I, I said well-rounded a second ago. Um, it's the, the well-rounded experience, the quality of the education, how well-prepared you are, the just incredible community that's here, that sense of community, um, and, and what that does for the people involved with that community. Um, I, I think as you talk about Market High and what makes it different, these are a lot of people that care about each other, they care for each other, um, and, you, and you get the great experience there. But as you talk about having fun and letting your guard down and, and being yourself around folks, uh, just sort of the lasting impression that the place makes on you, the, the connections that you make, 
Um, teachers came to my wedding. Teachers have come to our house for, um, you know, celebrations and things like that. I remember going back and celebrating other teachers' retirements uh, and the like, and then the friends and the bonds that you have there. It, it's really something to think that you're not just getting an education, you're not just getting the, the, the spiritual guidance, but you're, you're getting a really extended family and extended community that, that, that looks out for you. And it's, it's really tough to try to recreate that elsewhere, um, you know, where you, you look after the, the brotherhood and the, the group that's there. I think Tim took a lot of the words out of my mouth. Uh, you know, I've, I've used the word brotherhood and community a lot in every response I've given. I've never heard anyone who's gone to any private school in Milwaukee talk the way that my brothers from Market High School talk about Market High School and how, how it changed their lives, how they are still close to the community in whatever way that might be and how their lives have been transformed. Um, you know, I, I'm just thankful for that. I'm thankful I had that experience. And that's certainly something that as a lifelong resident of Milwaukee that I'm experiencing uh, daily and, and talking to people who've gone to other pri private schools. And I knew um, friends of mine who went to um, other schools or other private schools at the same time I did. And they, did not, and I feel bad, they didn't have the same experience with their classmates and the Market High School community that I did. I would uh, just bring up uh, the point of um, one of the tenants that um, Marquette, I don't know if the words preaches, but is cura personalis, which um, is something that, you know, speaks to me personally and my family, but, um, for those of you who don't know what that means, it's caring for the whole person, um, heart, mind, and soul. And, you know, I'm sure other schools can care about, you know, take care of the brain and can, you know, fill a lot of needs. But Marquette is about the full package. It's not just about your grades. It's about what's happening in your heart your soul, it's, it's the whole package. And um, I think that in particular, you know, sets it apart because that's not something you will get everywhere. Well, and piggybacking on that is another little catchphrase, right? But guys, have you ever taught, been heard the phrase, right? You're being groomed to be men for others, right? Kind of pounded into your head about it and you don't even think about it after a while. But I mean, I have a, a story. It's actually just happened to be from a call I was on for Boston College this week, but it applies because it's still from the Jesuits and it, we, they tied it back to being a man for others and in their case, men and women for others. But they told the story about how they're, when, I don't even know when this would have been, Boston College was in a bowl game. Probably not that typical, right? But um part of that week's activities was that there was a service project and all the BC kids, uh, football players were doing their part and just hopped in and did the service and whatever. And the other team literally was just along the sidelines, not participating. And the ref came and came over and was like, what's this about? And they're like, these guys have been taught to be men for others. And, and again, I think at the high school level, you guys are being taught that as well. And it just becomes a part of who, who the guys become. And I mean, I, I, um, to Cammie's point, I mean, I, I hold on to that, the men and women for others, we should all be that. Thank you. We know that we're being joined this morning by eighth graders on the cusp of making decisions, parents on the cusp of making decisions. Can I ask any of you if you have any final words of wisdom, inspiration, um, any other thoughts you wanna make sure that we have a chance to share? We didn't talk about it explicitly, and this won't be as interesting necessarily to the eighth graders, but to the families overall. I mean, Marquette High um, is a place, it's for the boys. It's all about the students, but the nice thing is there are a lot of opportunities for families to get to know each other as well. There is a, a mother-son, call it mom prom, but a, mo a mother-son dance. Um, some of our favorite memories, again, my son who went by, you know, being pulled by the ear kind of, but ended up having great time and like memorable pictures and just times we would not normally have. And there's father-son events and there's, um, you know, there's things where the family and the parents can get involved and feel like, you know, you don't want to be the helicopter parent. That's not what it's about, but it's about having ways to connect with the guys at a time when maybe 
it's they're not as talkative, you know, like where they're maybe not normally going to be talking about things, but at least you have something, some some insight into their daily life where you can ask questions that might pull things out. So I appreciate that. And I think that's a huge differentiator as well. There's not much left to say because I think you guys did a great job today in terms of covering everything. Um, a couple of final closing comments. Uh, please remember if you have any questions about the admissions process to please contact us at Market High, admissions at muhs.edu or by calling the school at 414-933-7220. Eighth grade families are reminded to please submit their application by November 1st. Thank you. Uh, uh, so much to our panelists for joining us. We are so uh, proud of, of you, our current students and alums. So pleased to be on this journey with you as parents and alum parents. We wish you all the best. Please stay safe. And again, please reach out to us. If you have not had a chance to, to do a tour and visit with any of our students, please think about doing that in the days ahead. Thanks so much.